ओके गाइस आई हैव टू बी ऑनेस्ट मेडिसिन इज रियली ए वो सब्जेक्ट द सिलेबस आर ह्यूज एंड यू रियली नीड टू लर्न एंड रिमेम्बर लॉट्स ऑफ स्टफ एंड समटाइम्स यूर सीनियर्स वुड हैव एडवाइज यू टू स्टार्ट प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर मेडिसिन फ्रॉम योर टोरियर इट सेल्फ बट लेट मी टेल यू द ट्रूथ इट्स नॉट सो डिफिकल्ट एज यू थिंक ओके इट्स लाइक यू आर गोइंग टू रीड योर रॉबिन्स ऑन योर फार्माकोलॉजी गेम लेट मी टेल यू द स्टोरी ऑफ माई फाइनल ईयर okay the circumstances under which we prepare for our exams if you have enough time you can listen to this story or just feel free to skip to the next part uh, i have given the time stamp below the description i just want you guys to have right mindset before approaching this final year subjects so the normal duration of the final year will be like 8 to 10 months but for us due to covid our third year exam got postponed and we entered our final year very late and uh, the late stage in the sense we had only 6 months to prepare and write our final mbbs exams it was such a huge pressure uh, we were so helpless we had lots of self doubt and we don't know whether uh, we could pull it off but despite all that we gave our exams and it's not pretty bad and i completed my exam 2 weeks back so honestly i took about 20 to 25 days in my entire final year to prepare for this medicine apart from the clinical postings it's not that i am so smart uh, this is the amount of days that i could able to afford for the medicine uh, already we were lacking so much time and we have to concentrate on other subjects too and within the span of one month i could able to cover all the important systems and important questions that are sufficient enough for a final medical student to pass with a good mark and i am not saying this to flex myself uh, what i am saying is if i could able to pull it off then you guys can too you can do even better because you are having ample amount of time and you are so smart you are so talented all you need is the right guidance and right strategy you just need to know what are the topics that you need to concentrate and what are the books and materials that you should use to excel in your exams so i made this video for that purpose and i really hope this video will be very very helpful for you in this video i'm going to cover okay, all the important aspects the books i used for medicine okay the topics that you need to prioritize and how to approach each topics and whether i used any online platforms and how to approach your practical exams everything so let's start with the books that i used for medicine this is the most common doubts of many students so for medicine many suggested me to use davidson i used it but i didn't like it i really hated studying in that book and there were many practical reason but it doesn't mean it's a bad book it's a really great book the concepts are so crisp and clear but i kind of felt like <laughs> it's not my type so for medicine i preferred this book called ramdas nayak book of medicine and it's a really really great book you will get all the adequate information you need and sometimes there will be extra information that are not given in the davidson ramdas nayak is a completely different book from davidson and each one prefer different types of book so for that i have made a detailed comparison between this ramdas nayak and davidson from its pricing to the way the concepts are presented so please free to check it out it's in my channel the another book that i used was manipal manual of medicine uh, okay it's a small book and it is less in volume and you will get what you need but i don't recommend you to use this book as your primary source though it has adequate information it really lacks some of the basic stuff it lacks diagrams it lacks flow charts it lacks classifications it lacks important criteria you may feel monotonous and sometimes it will be difficult for you to uh, remember the things that you read but you can definitely read some topics in that book Uh, which you find it difficult on the other books i just used davidson uh, for my reference purpose and i didn't use it as my primary source so for medicine i totally uh, had these three books one davidson and the ramdas nayak and the manipal manual of medicine for practicals uh, i will cover it in the later part of this video okay what the book so now you have to start reading from somewhere right so these are the topics that you are going to read and learn in the medicine of which the top most priority should be given to these five systems cardiovascular system respiratory system abdomen central nervous system and hematology why i'm saying is that these five system comprises almost 60 to 70 percentage of your total mbbs syllabus even if you take your past year question papers almost 50 to 60 percentage of this question comes from these five systems and more importantly for your clinical case presentations all of your cases 
will come from these five systems. Of these five systems, I always feel like abdomen is very easy. <laughs> it's because <laughs> this is the only system I properly read for my internal exam. Okay, jokes apart. Uh, why I am kind of feel the abdomen is very easy is that uh, the concepts are very interrelated. For example, if you read cirrhosis, portal hypertension, ascites and hepatic encephalopathy, all these concepts are interconnected. One pathology occurs due to other pathology. So all the symptoms and signs will be very very easy to correlate. So if you read abdomen once, you will really get a good orientation. Similar to abdomen, hematology is also one of the easiest system. Though there are lots of questions you need to study, you would have read about all these anemias, leukemias and platelet disorders in your physiology and pathology. I am not saying that you will remember everything but it will be easy for you to grasp the concepts when compared to other systems. On the other hand, the respiratory system and cardiovascular system is very very important to you and at the same time it is very difficult and it is very vague. You need to learn lots of criteria, lots of classification, lots of gradings, lots of medical regimens and treatments. So my best advice is to approach these two systems in a gradual way. Okay, don't rush it up, take adequate notes. And most of the concepts will be interconnected with each other. Uh, so that uh, try correlate things between this respiratory system and cardiovascular system. And central nervous system is a vast topic and probably the only system that makes you to hate medicine because the concepts will be a bit difficult and complicated and please don't try to memorize anything. Just try to read and remember uh, the significant points for each topic and that will be more than enough. And make sure you revise your neuroanatomy. It will be really really helpful to approach your concepts very easily and when you take cns the one topic that you must read is just stroke cerebrovascular accidents has high potential to be given as a long case in your clinical case presentations so these five systems should be your topmost priority and a next set of priority should be given to kidney psychiatry endocrinology rheumatology and poisoning there will be at least one or two sure questions from these topics of which uh, the kidney and endocrinology and poisoning are very easy topics to read. So if any day, uh, if you feel like, uh, you know, you start to eat medicine or if you feel saturated, then go again and start uh, reading these topics. It will be very easy to understand and it will be very easy to remember. And if you take diabetes, uh, instead of concentrating more on its types and pathogenesis, concentrate more on the complication and the management of diabetes. And if you take rheumatology, if you read it in the medicine, it will be helpful for you in orthopedics because the orthopedics too contain the same topics like rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, gout and lot more. And if you take psychiatry and dermatology, I will recommend you to study a few days before the exams because the topics are very simple and it is less in volume and it will take only few hours to complete uh, psychiatry and dermatology and if you feel anxious uh, then please read psychiatry at least once and get a good orientation because the psychiatry has very huge potential uh, to be asked in exams at least there will be one question from the psychiatry and more probably it will be your essay questions and then there is this one topic that most of the student tends to omit but which is very essential yeah, it is fluid and electrolytes, aka metabolic medicine. Here you will learn about hyperkalemia, hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, hyponatremia, metabolic acidosis, alkalosis, such that. And most of the student tends to omit these topics because they are not frequently asked in your exams. But these are the topics that you must know as a medical student. I am not asking you to spend more time on this topic, but at least try reading it once and uh, take a good notes and read it once before your exams. There may be surprise questions from these topics. And finally, infectious diseases. It is like a bug that sticks with you from your second year. You would have read infectious diseases in your microbiology and in community medicine. And now we have to read it again in medicine. So don't spend too much time on learning these things. Okay, don't try to read every infectious diseases. Just concentrate on the diseases that are significant and have high potential to be asked in the exams like HIV, tuberculosis, typhoid, rabies, amoebiosis and a lot more important bacterial, viral and parasitic infections. For all other diseases, you know, just remember it's causative agent and the clinical features and it will be more than enough for you to write a story in the exams. So these are the important topics that you need to learn first. And there are some other small topics too like nutrition, immunology, geriatrics, but they are not frequently asked in the exams. So if you complete these topics, 
you can surely pass your exams with a good score. So now you chose the system that you are going to read, but how to approach it? So each system has its own coordinal signs and symptom and investigation part. Identify it and write it down in your notebook. And you can write those to any questions that were asked from that particular system. That's how you should structure your answer because it will be very difficult for you to remember everything in the exams and sometimes you need to fill the pages. So if you know the coordinal signs and symptoms and investigation for each system, it will be really, really helpful for you to you know, manage uh, presenting your answers. And the next thing you have to do is your question bank. You know, take your question bank and mark all the important questions, sorry, mark all the questions that were asked in your previous university exams. Trust me, if you do this, it will cover almost 60% of your syllabus. Once you're done doing that, then go again and mark down the questions that you feel important. Sometimes your gut feelings will tell you that these questions may have high potential to be asked in your future exams. So go again and mark all the questions that you feel important. This itself covers almost 80 to 85 percentage of your entire syllabus. And beyond that, it's up to you. It's your interest. If you want to score even more and if you want to get a great mark, then go ahead and go through all the other unimportant concepts. Okay, now you read the topics, but how to remember it? Okay, let me tell about myself. Okay, I'm a kind of guy who hates note taking. And sometimes I hate to reread the things that I already read. But if you take medicine, it is really a vital subject. You will forget things way sooner than usual. So the simple trick I used was teaching. Only if you teach others, you will get a good hold of the concept. And teaching will really help you to remember things for a longer period of time since it is a mode of active recall. But if you're not good at teaching, then please try to uh, use other revision techniques, but you need to revise regularly in order to remember the things. And if possible, try to make lots of sticky notes. It will really help you during your exam preparation. So did I use Marrow or Prepladder or any other online platforms for studying medicine? No, I used it for other subjects, but for medicine, I didn't use it. Yeah, the video lectures are great, but it was too overwhelming. There were lots of videos and I didn't have enough time. So my go-to platform was YouTube. It is more than enough to clear all the concepts. But if you want to use Marrow or Pilplata or any other video platforms for medicine, then go ahead. Okay, I'm not stopping you. It will be really, really helpful. But it is not mandatory. And I wanted to say other important thing. When you are studying medicine, you should have these three textbooks. The textbook which you used for studying physiology, pharmacology, and pathology. For pharmacology, at least try to have the drug classification book. These three books are mandatory while you are studying medicine. At least try having the ebook version. You will get all the answers for your questions from these three textbooks, if not in your medicine textbook. Should you learn the topics that are taught in your lecture classes or you should start uh, studying on your own? It's up to you. Okay, I am a bad listener in lecture classes and I don't take notes. So I always study on my own. I always study the topics that I feel like studying. But never follow me. I am a bad example. Okay, try learning the topics that are taught in your, you know, college or lectures so that you can easily grasp the concepts and you can do well in your internal exams. But if you want to study on your own, then go again, there is nothing wrong in it. So let's come to the practicals. For practicals, I used two books. The first one is, okay, you would have guessed, it's Alagapan. It's a go-to book for many final medical students. Okay, it contains all the basic concepts and viva questions and basic examination procedures that you need to learn. It's a really great book. The other book I used is Bedside Clinicals in Medicine. It is such a lovely book. It contains all the conceptual questions that can be asked in your clinical case presentations. Sometimes certain examiners ask direct questions from that book. So you can definitely buy that. And it also contains photographs of all the examination procedures. When you read this book, it will surely kindle interest to learn lots of things. So these two books are very vital for your you know, 
practical preparation when you come to case presentation okay this is a static advice attend all the clinical postings please don't miss it out and you know try to present as many case as possible even if you present the same case for the 10th time you will learn a new thing and you know try to use all the opportunities you get to take history and examine the patients the more frequent you examine the patient the more confident you will feel in your university practical exams you don't need to go to ward every day it will really make you tired just go on alternate days or make use of your weekdays but the more important thing is don't ever do your examination with a doubt clarify it immediately don't do the examinations wrong if you have any doubt ask your seniors or professors because each book have given different types of uh, examination methods but you should follow what your professor says please maintain a proper notebook for your clinical postings and you must write all the things that were taught in your clinical postings if you didn't take notes in your theory classes it's okay it's not going to matter but you must take notes in the clinical postings there is a small advice that i really wanted to give please 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 be active in your clinical postings and try to answer questions okay many students don't do that they will be afraid of their professors and they will be afraid of making mistakes it's okay even if you uh, don't know the answer well try to answer why i'm saying is that that's how you will make impression to your professors and that's how you will get the boldness and confidence to answer in your vivas if you impress your professor he will surely help you during your practical exams this is the truth and you need to accept it in your university practical exams all the examiners will expect you to know these two things they will expect that you should thorough these two things one your case sheet the second one the examination procedures so please write down all the case sheets in a proper way in the proper format write down all the uh, histories that you need to ask all the relevant histories you need to ask for that particular system and you should know why you are asking that particular history which you can get it from your seniors or your professors and if you take clinical examination procedures okay you can learn it from your professors or you can watch a youtube video and try go through it in your textbooks but as i already said you should follow the procedures that was taught by your professor okay guys that's all for today's video i hope i have covered everything that you need to know in order to study medicine but there is high chance that uh, i may probably uh, miss out some important aspects so if there is anything please do mention it in a comment or you can contact me in any of these ids and this is my instagram page it's more like a study gram page where i will be posting study tips and important medical concepts so please do check it out uh, and if you really like it then feel free to follow it and thank you so much for watching this video till the end and i hope this video really helped you in some way and if you think that i deserve a like then go ahead and hit the thumbs up and more importantly subscribe and share it with your friends so bye until next time